Hi everybody, welcome to the second part of the poem, uh, The Elementary School Classroom in a Slum by Stephen Spender. I hope you have got a general idea about the theme of the poem, the class inequalities and the social injustice meted out on the marginalized in the post-World War European society. The poem is with the background of a slum elementary school classroom in a slum. And we also have understood that the poem is written in the background of the squalor and the social inequalities uh, following the uh, tremendous industrialization in Europe. Okay, and today's class we are going to concentrate on the first and second stanzas. Uh, we will uh, read the lines and expressions and we will try to analyze the meaning and implications of these expressions to the larger theme of the poem. So don't worry, we are going very slow. And this poem is full of images, powerful images. Uh, you can say a series of images, metaphors and similes clubbed together to strike forth the in flashes the conditions of the slum children and the amount of uh, uh, what I can say inequalities and injustice method out there. You will find that the poem is not really written in sentences uh, or in a sentence. We can see the fragmentary images or fragmentary expressions sometimes quite unconnected um, throughout the poem that itself shows the complete uh, amount of fragmentization in the society between the rich and the poor as well. Now, let us go ahead, uh, the line by line uh, discussions on this poem. Let us read it once again. Far, far from the gusty waves, these children's faces, like rootless weeds, the hair torn round their pallor, the tall girl with her weighed down head, the paper seeming boy with the rat's eyes, the standard unlucky hair of twisted bonds reciting a father's null disease, his lesson from his desk. At back of the dim class, one unnoted sweet and young, his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in the tree room other than this. Following that, we find that on sacred walls, donations, Shakespeare's head, cloudless at dawn, civilized dome riding all cities, bell the flowery Tyrolis Valley, open-handed map awarding the world its world, and yet for these children, these windows, not this map, their world, where all their future is painted with a fork. Again, a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky, far, far from rivers, caves, and stars of words. Okay, so let us try to understand the poem in depth. Um, are you with me? Let's go line by line. Uh, the first stanza portraits or delineates uh, the picture of the uh, children, uh, the slum children in the elementary classroom, their physical mental condition is very dexterously drawn in here uh, through various beautiful pointed expressions, which together intensifies uh, the terrible condition of the slum children in deprivation. Okay. So far, far from the gusty waves, these children's faces. They're describing the slum school children in the elementary school classroom, as I told you. Far, far from the gusty waves. Now let us talk about gusty waves. Gusty means flowing of wind is called, or blowing of wind is called gusty. Gusty waves, strong waves okay windy waves that means the waves are striking very strongly then what do you think wave stands for waves can stand for the sea the waves can also stand for the strong tide of development waves can be the development okay so gusty waves a doubly redoubled force very strong waves of development or the very strong waves at the sea 
Here C stands for beauty of nature or the boundary of nature. So let us take two levels of meaning. Gusty waves. One meaning is metaphorically the gusty waves of development in Europe. Okay, the post-industrialization, there was a tremendous, massive development in Europe because of industrialization. Okay, but for these children, these developments are far, far away. So, far, far from the gusty waves of development or far, far from the beauty of nature or the bounty of nature, waves taken in two ways. So it's a metaphor, gusty waves stand for uh, the gusty waves of development, okay, compared to development, gusty waves compared, or developments are post-industrial developments in Europe uh, is compared to the gusty waves which engulfs the shore. Okay, the shore of Europe is completely gulped up or completely swallowed and submerged in the tremendous development post-industrial era. But for these children, they are still in the slum and development has never reached them. They are still deprived and marginalized. I think you got the idea. So far, far, you can see a doubling everywhere, far, far, very, very far, very remote from the gusty waves of development. Gusty waves, gusty is powerful, again waves are powerful to show that great developments happened or have taken place in Europe, but for these children, they are underprivileged malnourished, deprived, living in squalor and com complete poverty. Okay, so I got, I think you got the idea. So far from, far from the gusty waves of development, these children are quite away from the waves of development and the bounty of nature. These children's faces, you look how their faces are like rootless weeds, the expression, rootless weeds. Weeds are unwanted growth in a crop plant, right? We weed them out, we pluck them and throw them out like that. These children, slum children, are deprived of or marginalized from the main strata of society because they are weeds in the society. So they have been contained in some slums and completely deprived of or thrown away from the main strata of the society. So they are weeds, all right? So unwanted things. And they sat weeds itself is a kind of pathetic and weird condition, unwanted, but rootless weeds, they are rootless. That means they may die out, dry out any time. A weed which is not rooted in soil cannot grow, it cannot absorb the minerals and whatsoever be the nourishment required for its growth. So for these children, there is no food, no proper drinking water, no education, no health, no medical support, nothing. So they are simply rootless weeds, the most unwanted thing in the society. Uh, they have been completely thrown away from the main strata of the society, the facilities of the society. So they are completely traumatized, thrown, dumped up in slums. And you know, one more fact that post-industrialization or industrialization has brought a lot of uh, emergence of slums, mushrooming of slums and large amount of labor class living in a pathetic condition, just like in a kind of refugee camp and completely uh, in illness, distraction, malnourishment, deformity, ill health and whatnot. So the poet is very severely, very intensely, poignantly brings out the images of complete marginalization and poverty through these lines. I think, children, you, uh, you got the idea. So far, far from the gusty waves of the development or the bounty of nature, God has given uh, the bounty to everyone equally, but this uh, slum children or the people in the slum, the labor class, are not allowed to enjoy it because of the rich, the divide, divide between the haves and the have-nots, okay? So, I don't want to make it very sophisticated, rather I want to just to make it like how we are talking in the classroom or conversating and, or we are getting into discourse in the classroom, right? So that'll help you learn things much better, easier, originally. All right, next expression, uh, their hair torn uh, around their pallor. Pallor is a kind of paleness of the face, okay? The color of the face, pale. How 
will the uh, face become pale or the body become pale when we have ill health or malnourishment okay not having enough protein minerals or balanced diet and we don't have enough blood in us so this all show the sign of poverty right so pallor pale face and uncared life rootless weeds okay they are the hair torn around the hair is very unkempt untidy broken okay broken and very dirty and they are ill in ill health okay the hair torn round their pallor the torn brown hair uh, uh, fallen round their pale face the picture of extreme poverty that you must have viewed the images in google so very many um, portraits and everywhere okay so the crying child tears out skeletonic and uh, unkempt falling hair broken hair falling on their face okay and such kinds of a uh, very sad penetrating picture of po poverty is completely intensely portrayed by the poet Stephen Spenter in this line. So see how visual the poem is. This is what the greatest visual effect of this poem, right? These expressions are so powerful and this poem is beautiful in all levels of poetry. So uh, pallor with a tall girl. There's a tall girl, there's a young boy, a tiny boy, a deformed boy, that tells that the slum children, for the sake of namesake, they have been built a school and all the children of the slum have been kept into it, uh, irrespective of their age, their uh, level of uh, classes to be. It's a heterogeneous mass group of children dumped in a building called school with all the dirt and squalor, just as an eye wash before the society that facility has been provided for the slum children. Also, this is just a namesake eye wash. All right. So the tall girl stands for uh, an aged girl and malnourished, ill health. And next expression, see how she stands. If we are a good artist, we can draw beautiful pictures of, out of these images. The tall girl with her weighed down head. head. Head is weighed down. Maybe one is weighed down, slow, shown as bowed down, bowed down with poverty, bowed down with the burden of life, bowed down with the shame, bowed down with the atrocities of life, right? So this is what the meaning of weighed down, heavy head. She has a heavy head, heavy burden of life, atrocities of life, shame, insult, poverty, ill health, all these things in series of lines together. So weighed down. So when will a person's life get weighed down? It is what the condition. And that's the first child in the class, a tall aged girl, a very thin, her hair round, uh, falling down, 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 round her pallor, pale face, uh, tall girl. Then the paper seeming boy, the second child. We, we, are, we are going to see different children or uh, children in the slum classroom. Okay, or the paper seeming boy, the paper seeming boy again metaphor. Okay, the paper seeming paper looking boy or paper like looking boy. What do you mean by that? Paper here stands for is it newspaper or a piece of paper or any paper for that matter? What quality of the paper is compared with the boy? You know, they are under malnourishment, the thinness, skeletonic, ill health. All right, so that is what the paper seeming boy. Okay, and if you take a far-fetched image or think in terms of paper stands for a wide sheet of paper and again you come up with an idea of a paleness, okay, the paper, paleness, the grayishness, then that also can be attached to ill health, malnourishment, uh, lack of food, poverty, hunger, okay, perpetual poverty. So paper seeming boy, a boy as thin as a paper, right? A boy is the, the malnourished, skeletonic boy in the elementary school classroom is compared to a paper, all right? So again, metaphoric image, the paper seeming boy with the rat's eyes, his eyes look rat's eyes, 
what do you mean by rat's eyes? Two levels of meaning. Rat's eyes means rat's eyes are very small. Okay, so in one meaning, he has got small eyes, tiny eyes. You may say sometimes, maybe sometimes, a little wrong to say that right, very small eyes are due to malnourishment. Or we can say that his eyes are sunken into the socket because of poverty, no energy, no shine in his, in his eye. That's one level of interpretation. The other level is, have you ever looked at the rats moving around, particularly into their eyes? Their eyes are very shifty, right? That means they are searching for something or the other food. Every way they are in a rat race, rushing out, searching something, running off like that. Okay, so just like that, this little child is also ever searchful for raging for food, ever searchful for food and something pleasant, right? So it is extremely uh, what is sickening to uh, for us to understand the condition of the Salam children in the elementary classroom. Then let us see the third one, the standard unlucky air of twisted bonds. Okay, the standard unlucky air of twisted bond. Standard means development standard. Standard means prevented, blocked, blunt. Okay, so uh, st what is standard? His health is standard. His growth is standard. His growth his development is standard. Okay, his physical growth is blocked by malnourishment, ill health, lack of food, poverty, hunger marginalization, deprivation, okay? There's the recurring images of the same condition of extreme poverty. When the cities and the towns are completely seething with the uh, waves of development, facilities, luxuries of life, okay? Direct contrast. Shall we go ahead? The standard unlucky heir. Why is he unlucky? Because he inherited his father's gnarled disease. Okay, gnarled disease. So father's gnarled disease. What is his father's gnarled disease? Twisted bonds. That means the child, one of the children in the classroom, a boy, he is unlucky that he has inherited his father's twisted bonds, deformity, disabled. All right, and disablement is, uh, you know, completely connected with malnutrition. All right, vitamin deficiency, malnutrition, lack of food. Right, so let us again go ahead. His growth is standard, blocked. He is unlucky because he has inherited his father's gnarled disease. What do you mean by gnarled disease? disease you know but this disease is a gnarled disease gnarled gnarling here stands for kind of a rough and brokenness right so you can see the barks of the trees when they're growing up and the, when they get older the barks will peel out break and peel out right just like a leper patient right and the, the branches will dry and uh, broken they will fall down right so just like that this child's uh, condition is also his disease is also a gnarled disease broken development affected okay so uh, gnarled disease let's once again go the standard unlucky here standard means growth standard due to malnutrition and poverty he's unlucky because he has inherited his father's deformity physical deformity and what is that physical deformity twisted bonds i'll tell you about his twisted bonds a while later uh, reciting his uh, his lesson so let us restructure this line the standard a boy who is an unlucky heir of his father's gnarled disease of twisted bond is reciting his lesson from his desk in the elementary school classroom. Once again, the third boy described in the elementary classroom is the standard, means development or growth standard block prevented boy who has unluckily uh, inherited his father's uh, terrible def physical deformity 
of twisted bonds and now he is reciting his lesson before his or at his desk in the elementary school classroom okay vivid picture now let me tell you something about uh, the something about the null the disease twisted bonds etc and i invite your attention to what i have already talked about industrialization and the formation of slums and extreme poverty for the slum people marginalization etc and let me tell you about the twisted bonds and the null disease that is completely uh, in connection with the industrialization and the slum formation okay and please let me read during the industrial revolution uh, in europe during the mid 18th to mid 19th centuries rickets was prevalent in temperature countries because pollution from factories blocked the uh, sun's ultraviolet rays during the terror Cod liver oil was common remedy for rickets. You know, rickets, rickets are coming mainly because of the lack of vitamin D. Then, in simple explanation, rickets is a disorder caused by insufficient exposure to sunlight, resulting in vitamin D deficiency as well as lack of calcium. This ailment is also called osteomalacia. Vitamin D is a vital as it uh, uh, regulates the bone building process and the way the body handles calcium and phosphor uh, phosphorus. Both minerals are important for uh, forming strong bonds. When calcium absorption is insufficient, the bonds become softer and weaker. As a result of gravity and the body weight, the rib cage may become deformed, a condition often labeled as pigeon's breast. The results are poor muscle tone, uh, bowed legs, uh, concave chest cavity and poor growth in children and adolescents. Uh, the child's ability to crawl, to sit up and walk is hindered. His or her abdomen may protrude and uh, anemia and diarrhea are fairly common symptoms. Okay, so this is what the condition of uh, twisted bonds. And this kinds of malnourishment, lack of vitamin D and calcium will turn out to complete crunching or crouching of the body or kind of distortion of the body uh, shape and the legs will be twisted, right? And this is what the condition of the children. So there is one child in the classroom who is with complete physical deformity and uh, physical handicapness. Okay, so now hope you understood up to here. Null disease. Uh, then his love from his desk at the back of the dim class unnoted. There is one child uncared by anybody, unnoticed by anybody. A sweet and young child. The very important. The child is very young. Okay, is a very sweet and young child, because he is not exposed to the brutal realities of poverty or brutal realities of class inequalities brutal realities of life yet to be experienced by him so he's sweet and still imaginative colorful about his future colorful imagination about his future he's fancying of the world outside the squirrels uh, um, house the trees the branches the the nature the rivers the beauty the flowers and every kind of magnificence sorry magnificence uh, of life uh, in store for him okay so his eyes live in a dream he's very imaginative about his he's very fanciful about his uh, life ahead uh, he's imagining squirrel's game squirrel's game in nature he likes to be as free as the squirrel and hopping everywhere on the branches of the tree and living in a tree room his own um, what I can say home in the tree okay tree halls so his eyes live in a dream or squirrel's game in tree room other than this other than this means other than the dull elementary school classroom uh, the terrible uh, squalor in which the slum children are living okay so in uh, it's a stark reality and in complete contrast with and the colorful world outside in nature's bounty and the luxuries of life the capitalism offers outside 
the child is in contrast living in complete what i can say abominable poverty okay heatable condition sickening atmosphere squalor and dirt completely marginalized ostracized i think you got the idea okay so shall we move on to the second part second stanza i think you are thorough with if you if you get any question you'll be able to answer and i request children you can rewind the uh, video and note down the expressions meaning properly in terms of the way that you will understand in your, your own language or your own expressions you write and keep okay so i must be sometimes a little so elaborate and deeper in analysis this much may not be required for you but to understand it is very important so that you can answer any question from anywhere or you can appreciate the expressions you can appreciate reading poems more now second part of the poem we are talking about the atmosphere in the elementary school classroom the things available in the elementary school classroom and here also you can see the complete severe contrast with the world of luxuries world of opportunities the world of flamboyance the world of facilities the uh, the nature and the rich world offer for the people for the haves and it very very intensely uh, strikes the contrast between the uh, ever widening gap between uh, between the haves and the have nots shall we go ahead okay first uh, the poet is describing vividly the school classroom walls and uh, what are the things available in the school classroom on the sour cream walls sour cream light yellowish uh, wall painting of the wall okay the sar. how is the paint on the wall it is sour something goes sour means something go taste uh, distasty or bad in taste okay so here it stands for the the color wash on the wall uh, has gone very dirty and damp because of the seepage or lack of care or maintenance that means once made as a namesake everything is done and so many things are kept in beyond that nobody bothers to care maintain take care uh, etc okay so the 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 walls of the school classroom are very fainted the paint got fainted and damaged and the walls are damaged with the dampness and discolor of the paint the plaster falling out coming out it's a kind of at at most a sickening sight on the wall how can education which gives light to people's life be acquired in such kind of squalor and dirt dirty atmosphere okay on the sour cream walls you can see a lot of donations people must have donated it or the rich must have donated it has been just a donation as a gift or something thrown away to them okay and they don't find whether these things are of any use for the children that's the saddest part when we donate something we should also look into the fact that whether these donations will help the uh, people who receive it okay but for namesake all these things have been kept to boast about that we have done everything for the slum people but they di really didn't do anything beyond a namesake one time giving just to shut the mouth of others in complaining okay so all the donations uh, uh, given to them can be seen um, in the following lines you can see shakespeare's head each donation has a representative meaning as well you can note down shakespeare's head shakespeare's head stands for the bust part of shakespeare is painted on the wall of the classroom or kept in the classroom okay so shakespeare's head stands for shakespeare master of literature okay the greatest dramatist of all time having 38 dramas or uh, plays written um, by him okay so <clears throat> a 16th century dramatist uh, dramatist okay on 23rd of april was his birthday okay so so shakespeare's shakespeare's head is presented there as a donation it stands for the world of literature it represents education the light of education okay uh, the shakespeare is sorry um shakespeare is a fountain head of world drama 
literature so he stands as a motivation for the children to educate themselves into the rich source of literature enlighten themselves and make a history which is said in the last line of the poem right so shakespeare's head is symbolic of the great amount of education that a child can achieve and enlighten himself and uh, be a great soul like Shakespeare and a symbol of motivation okay Shakespeare's head and then you can see another big painting on the wall cloudless at dawn a uh, dawn is painted and early morning is painted with a cloudless sky okay a beautiful cloudless uh, sky in the early morning okay the sun rising time is uh, painted there a sunrise scene with a cloudless sky that shows the light of hope all right brightness energy etc rising up so let the education let school education or the, let the learning uh, awake a sun of knowledge and energy potential in each child just like that sun uh, shines up rise up out of the hills which is being seen from distance come out with a uh, with a streak of energy and light giving us joy happiness uh, vitality power force and motivation to start the day so is education enlightening the minds of everyone giving light of energy light of enlightenment to go on and achieve greater things in life that is what the representative meaning but for the children it has no use because they are not even able to raise their head uh, and not even learning because they are malnourished development stunned they are seeming boy they have no hope of future no chances available right so cloudless at uh, dawn you can see just see then civilized dawn riding all cities then you can see uh, the picture of a city the skyscape of a beautiful city with a lot of black, lot of buildings with the domes and churches cathedrals and lot of such buildings right great institutions etc so what do these stand for these buildings and domes and um, what i can say concrete uh, jungles that men have created or stand for the greater facilities and luxury of life that uh, the capitalist system has brought in for only for the rich okay and so it these domes riding all cities are seen painted with lots of buildings and domes and cathedrals and beautiful architectural wonders stand for the civilization of human being so the human beings have got such a large extensive civilization and made a huge contribution in development of the civilization but for these poor children far far from the gusty waves of development they are living in complete poverty complete darkness okay you got it that's what the contrast riding all cities bell the flowery tyrolese tyrol tyrolese valley tyrolese valley is in austria in somewhere on the alps uh, mountain range area beautiful valley and uh, amazingly breathtakingly beautiful with its uh, uh, colorful flamboyance of flowers and greenery uh, and bell cathedral bells etc it's a beautiful amazing and um, painting like picture okay so tyrolese valley tyrolese valley so you can see in tyrolese valley flowery completely flower, flowery with the with the fragrance and breeze and beauty and breathtakingly amazing and you can see bell the bell here stands for the cathedral bells you can see the cathedral uh, bells Uh, the cathedrals are jetted out projected out throughout the valley for completely green flowers and fragrance such a beautiful valley the bounty of nature which these slum children are not able to access now you compare these beautiful scenes with the condition of and the squalor of the slum children how they are living okay then i think you got it we were talking about the sour cream very bad shaped wall damaged through dampness and discolored never cared after the first paint some donation shakespeare's head which stands for motivation for education 
okay cloudless at dawn the dawn the sun rising scene with, with no clouds stand for energy stand for hope stand for faith stand for doing things and achieving something uh, has no value for the children then civilized uh, the great mark of civilization a scene of the city painted with the skyline city skyline with the buildings raised buildings and domes and churches and cathedrals and all stand for the great amount of civilization that the human race has achieved but for the slum children there is absolutely nothing and belled flowery the cathedral bells flowery tyrol tyrolese valley you can see valley full of flowers and beautiful scenes but for these children the slum is their dirty valley then in the classroom you can also find an open-handed map and map the place is not completely confined and marked all right that means the vast space is shown out in the map the world is shown in the map okay the world of opportunities shown in the map the world the limitless world of opportunities so the open-handed map stands for the limitless world of opportunities projected out to these children that is what the open-handed map stands for but do you think these children can reach out to these opportunities never as far as the present situation is concerned so uh, the poet is trying to say that everything in the classroom every donation in the classroom is rather a mockery upon the children it is a namesake a nonsense a mockery a kind of black humor kind of thing stuck upon the children when the basic need of the children is food and water and shelter and they are not at all taken care of by the rich this is what the callousness indifference and insensitiveness of an inhumanity meted out by the rich upon the poor but the rich wanted to be uh, very very gentle and welfaristic um, people of humanity uh, to the external eyes by namesake donations okay open handed map awarding the world its world means it's a little difficult phrase but it's not difficult at all if you think in the right way uh, there is an open handed map a very the world map is on it is very open handed means it is not confined or limited in a, in areas okay limitless areas of in the map the world is completely the limitless area of the world is shown in the map open handed map so it symbolically stands for the limitless world of opportunities that the children can reach out and achieve through education right to education of the poor you can talk about right to education in india recently it was 2009 right to education right so 2009 or so if my memory permits okay so right to education is the first and foremost human rights we should say right open handed map awarding the world so the map in the in the classroom shows the uh, places of the world the world completely is shown in the map means the limitless wo world of opportunity is shown through the map but for these children their world is only the slum and yet for these children these windows of the classroom will shut them in from this unlimitless world of opportunities outside shown in the open handed map not this map their world their world is the slum these windows will shut their views from the limitless world of opportunities later it is said that uh, their life is just like in a catacomb later in the third stanza or so okay where all their future is painted with a fog the children's future is completely painted with a fog fog unseen or the sight prevented they cannot see through the fog of negligence and indifference of the capitalist society where their future is their future is completely dim bleak you you must have read some of other novels um, bleak house and uh, chimney sweepers oliver twist uh, all these stories uh, depict completely about the poverty of the um, labor poor okay post industrialization 
So here also the same thing where the future of the children is painted with a fog, beautiful image. The future of the children is compared to a painting, uh, a kind of, what I can say, an explicit painting or the visual of the painting. The vision of the painting is marred by the fog. Okay, just like that. Phantom. Phantom light right so their future is completely dimmed and covered by the uh, fog of ignominy or fog of indifference fog of injustice fog of inequalities okay um, i think you understood uh, you could understand uh, uh, the condition of the children and again about their future a narrow street sealed their future is just like a narrow street if you look of if they look out through the window of the slum classroom, you will see only a narrow street sealed, covered with the lead sky. Lead, you know, dull sky. Okay, lead is a um, gray colored or colorless metal, or we can say, or dull colored metal. So the future is very dull. It's not like kind of my dawn, sunrise, or anything like that. Their future is completely painted with the fog. Future is unimaginably foggy, unclear. There is no future for them. A narrow, they can see only the narrow street through the, through the window of the classroom. That means their, the sky of their future is sealed down in the slum and they can't see beyond that small streak of the sky. Okay, there's no chance of their development. There's no, everything is sealed and shut them inside the uh, squalor of the um, slum uh, by the rich. Okay, ever widening gap between the rich and the poor. A narrow street sealed in with a lead sky, far, far from rivers, far, far from the bounty and beauty of nature, resources of development, caves. Okay, caves, you know, the jetting out land, uh, the, the land jetting out into sea. Beautiful sign, okay? That's a stepping stone to the vast ocean of opportunities, okay? So the cape is a stepping or down stone, of, I can say like that. The end of the earth, beyond which the sea starts, with the amazing um, matchless or borderless amount of opportunities, the sky of opportunities stand, the stand, the sea of opportunities start, and the star of words, star of words, education, stars of words, education, words bring stars of victory in us, okay, enlightenment in us, the stars of enlightenment can rise up in us only when we get education, so these children are the future of the children is completely weak, unclear, or dark with uh, no education, no beauty of possibilities of nature, no bounty of uh, the nature's glory, no sea of development or opportunities. I hope you understood or you could uh, understand a little more about the poem in the first two stanzas. Uh, please read uh, the stanzas again and again and again. Connect to the main theme of class inequalities and social injustice, the gaps between the rich and the poor. Then the poem will be very easy to be understood. Okay, hope you enjoyed the class today. And now you may go to the CBSC portal uh, uh, download 10 years of body question people and go through that and see how many extracts questions or short answer questions have been asked from these two stanzas. Try to answer them. If you do have any doubts, you can post your doubts. If you like the video, please spread the like, press the like button. Or if you find that something more to be done, you just send me the comments for improvement so that I can reach out to you a bit with the uh, better videos. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Hope you have enjoyed it and learned a lot. Thank you so much. Good day.